You sit in church week after week, embracing the truth of God's Word. You believe the gospel and claim Jesus Christ as your Lord. Yet you continue to struggle with pornography. You feel like a hypocrite, returning to the sin you hate that mocks the God you love. You desperately wonder, is lasting freedom even possible? Yes, you can overcome pornography, but not alone. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, Now flee from youthful lusts and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Only by repeatedly running from sin to Christ with other believers can you hope to enjoy lasting freedom. You can live with purity and integrity. Take courage, seek accountability, and do whatever is necessary. Get equipped at accountabletoyou.com. Well, that's, that sounded like... That's not bad. That's, that's like real music. Yeah. That wasn't, that wasn't Knox, bad at all. Knox, put it there. Knox, we still don't need you. <laughs> hey, y'all. Welcome to Cross Politics on the Fight Lap Feast Network. Pastor Toby. I'm the water boy, and we still got uh, Mr. Joe Knox here. Cheers. Joe Cheers. Vandal Knox. Yep. He's, he's kind of flat. He's he's like sw- he, swooping down. He's he ha- falling down he, every day. You really Over. haven't had much to add to the conversation yet, but yep. yeah. He's Anyways. just standing there. Knox, get back in the studio. All right. Hey, our magazine. Boom. Yes, our magazine Fight. should be at your door Laugh, right now. Feast magazine. Damn Darwinism is the is the mm-hmm. new issue. Issue 4.1. Yep. And this is kind of, you know, also in preparation of our Fight Laugh Feast Conference, Politics right. of Six Day Creation. This is this is in to get, you, get you excited. Get those yeah. juices flowing. This is the appetizer for mm-hmm. the feast. It's coming in October 11th through the 14th at the Ark Encounter, the politics of six day creation. But, um, but there's, uh, the I mean, Pastor Wilson wrote an article called Darwin's Whorehouse. Uh oh. In here, yep, Darwin's Whorehouse. You got, um, uh, John Brannion on Idolatry Today. You got, uh, George Grant on media, on the media monkey business. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe, maybe hitting the, oh, the you trial. Oh, my bit. favorite part is I already know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mrs. Mm-hmm. Sumter's Maryland crabs. Right oh, there. She put a nice that, recipe that, that's, in there. That's my wife. That's Jenny good. Sumter, page 54. Yep. Everybody go there first. Yep. And then Cal Beisner yeah. uh, got a good article in there. And then our old boy, Brian Sussman. Brian Sussman. We interviewed oh. years ago. He was talking about of, the climate. Yeah. craziness. Yeah, that's right. All climate right. Well, anyways, oh, there you go. Can people, get, like, I mean, for the, for the people who didn't get a subscription, can they buy a, an issue? So they can order back if, if order they, issues. If they repent, yeah, and they realize that they were wrong yep. and they were fools, so they can back order an yeah. issue. And or what they can do is they su- can subscribe, okay, and then uh, email us and say, "Hey, can I just my subscription include that last issue?" Yeah, they ask and nicely. Well, well, they ask nicely. We'll make like, sure it happens. Contact at fightlifefeast Make pretty, sure that happens, please. Yeah, okay. Anyways, but you also just want to like just subscribe if you haven't subscribed for the magazine yet. Uh, Fight Life Feast magazine quarterly. Um, uh, yeah, my, my every- kids actually like getting yeah. into the magazine every yeah. time I bring I bring it home, and it's a, it yeah. really is a quarterly quarterly book like mini mini book like experience. I yeah. mean, it, various authors, same topic. Yeah. You know, okay. awesome. One more thing before we jump into our interview yeah. for today: Grace Agenda 2023. Uh, Grace Agenda registration just went live on Monday, and it is almost full. Um, so basically. Um, you need to run. Do not walk. Run, even if you have scissors in your hands. Run <laughs> straight to your computer, your phone. Go to graceagenda.com, and you need to sign up today. Um, mm-hmm. There's there's pre-conferences for men and women that are already sold out. Yep. So, sorry. But Friday night, Saturday, um, this is uh, in August. Yeah. It's like uh, 11th and 12th. 11th and yeah. 12th. Um, Chris- it shouldn't be snowing by then. No, yeah, right. We most most <laughs> most, likely. most most likely not snowing yeah. anymore. Odds so, will be good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Christian parents are tasked by God to raise their children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. This is not confined simply to making sure they have a roof over their head and they get their nose wiped. Rather, this task is the all-encompassing instruction of children. They're to be taught about this world in light of the of the fact that God Almighty has created and redeemed this world, and so children are to grow up rejoicing in the way that God has done all this. So. You're invited to join us here in Moscow, Idaho, for Grace Agenda 2023 as we look to encourage Christian parents in the glorious task of raising their children to love and worship Jesus, to lead their generation, and to be the sort of faithful saints that can do the same for their own children. So the theme this year is education 
in the Badlands. So needed. Um, so again, needed. it's almost full. Go to yeah. graceagenda.com right now. And if you can't make it to the conference, all the talks will be posted to YouTube. And we encourage you to consider donating to the conference at graceagenda.com slash Donate and also, I mean, one of our favorite parts of the Grace Agenda is on Saturday night after the after the conference, yeah. uh, we have we we block off Main Street for several blocks and we have a, a big block party with free food and live music and dancing mm-hmm. and cross politic usually brings the ice cream. Um, and anyways, it's it's a blast. We might try to bring the beer this year. And I, I want to do the beer um, this year, but be- we'll see. How we'll about see. beer and ice cream? Beer and ice cream. You yeah. know, that's weird mix, but yeah, we can I mean, do that. You're telling me that I'm, I, that's a weird mix. You're Mr. Dr. Yeah. Pepper and, and cigars. cigars. That's so good, though. What are your other weird it's so combos? Good. You have a lot of weird There's combos. There's a story about cigars and Dr. Pepper. Um, I started doing that in, in the 90s. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I started doing that sorry. way back in the 90s. Well, uh, my buddy Phil went to a cigar lounge in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, yeah. real nice cigar lounge, and he goes up to get a drink, and, and, and the Dr. Pepper was on tap. It was for free. And he asked the bartender, he's like, hey, why do you guys have Dr. Pepper for free? And he said, well, if anybody's ever smoked a cigar and Dr. Pepper, they'll know they deserve a free Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Mic drop. It was it, it, like, like I got validated no. by Phoenix, Arizona. Stop it, Phoenix. Yeah. Way to go, Phoenix. Stop it. <laughs> Don't Amazing. encourage him. Hey, we're really grateful to have with us back on the show uh, one of our favorite attorneys in That's the right. world. That's right. Davis Youngs is a Christian husband, homeschool dad. Uh, did I mention that he's an attorney? Yes, it's yes. already in there. It's, yes. it's in there twice. A uh, former military officer providing legal guidance and expert criminal defense to the military, uh, federal law enforcement, and other patriots. Uh, former prosecutor, JAG lawyer. Again, he's a lawyer still. Still, uh, still an attorney. Number one rate defense a pattern. counsel in the Air Force. He runs a focused legal practice helping Americans preserve their religious freedom, equal protection under the law, and basic constitutional rights in criminal administrative proceedings. Davis, thanks for coming back on Cross Politic. Hey, thanks, brothers. Excited to be here. Absolutely. So this is one of those shows where I, I mean, you know, I always start off opening the beer early, anyways. Oh, you were going to do okay. that anyways, right up there but next. I always do that, but this is especially you got to you know this is beer and Psalms Wednesday, mm-hmm. and he, and you got to do it now, okay? Because okay. Davis is about to bring some smoke, okay, and so some fire, okay, and he's going to burn down some forests <laughs> and all this. And there's no Dr Pepper. And there's no Dr Pepper, and I can't smoke <laughs> a cigar in the studio, anyways. Okay, but um, now this is one of them shows because Trump got indicted. Um, and some people say indicted yesterday. Uh, Nobody says that. <laughs> it's a, it's a joke. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's there's just a, all sorts of funny business going around. But first, I, I want to um, we're going to play just a quick clip. He had a, a DA district attorney Alvin Braggs from Manhattan uh, talk for about five minutes, six minutes. We we just distilled it down to about sixty seconds here. So here's just a clip, kind of um, uh, summarizing a little bit what they're doing with Trump. So let's roll this clip first. Earlier this afternoon, Donald Trump was arraigned on a New York Supreme Court indictment, returned by a Manhattan grand jury on 34 felony counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. 34. Under New York state law, it is a felony to falsify business records with intent to defraud and an intent to conceal another crime. That is exactly what this case is about. 34 false statements made to cover up other crimes. These are felony crimes in New York State, no matter who you are. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. As this office has done time and time again, we today uphold our solemn responsibility to ensure that everyone stands equal before the law. No amount of money including the and no amount York. of power oh, yeah, changes sure. that enduring American principle. Oh, man, no. he sounds like he sounds like he cares about justice. Equality. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Um, Davis, how how did one charge because it, it, it kind of grow into 34 <laughs> charges? <laughs> well, you know, honestly, when I first read the indictment, when it became public, that's what I was looking for. Right. So I put on I started out just putting on my prosecutor hat because I've done that. And I said, OK. You know, what what kind of charges are they looking for? What are they going to do? And and it really is one one charge, one offense of false business entries related to attorney's fees. That's what that's what the charge is. But they've done it 34 different ways. So they're they're taking every instance of paying him, turning that into three individual charges. And then they're just expanding it out month after month after month to turn it into what looks like 34 felony charges. So. It, that's, I think, just the initial issue in this is there's one crime, there's one offense of 
you know, fraudulent entries related to attorney's fees. Um, that's it. That's what this is about. There's nothing else. There's no surprises. There's no smoking gun on anything else, but they managed to try to turn that into 34 charges. So when I look at that, it looks to me like what we call charge stacking, or we call it unreasonable multiplication of charges. Um, that would be one of the issues I would expect to see very, very soon in motions practices. This is an mm -hmm. unreasonable exaggeration of, of the criminality of what mm -hmm. happened. So uh, the fraud thing, you remember we had Harvey silver glate on yeah and he talked about how we're it's so easy to get basically three felonies every day and fraud was a big easy way the government could kind of it's a broad category it's not defined well that kind of thing is that kind of a little bit what's going on here by charging temple with, with fraud 100 percent. the the charge itself is very very simple um and it's not factually complicated at all right and so one of the things he talks about is hey this investigation took so long we had to be very very thorough takes a long time no facts the facts here are very very simple this is just talking about business you know entries into a general business ledger that are either accurate factually or not but we the the, the fraud charge is just very, very common. You see it all the time. You see it in all kinds of circumstances. And it is a way to stack things. It's a way to hold people accountable. The biggest thing I would equate it to as an attorney is it's it's like paying your taxes, right? So you go to pay your taxes and the IRS says to you, your taxes are due. You need to pay your taxes or you'll be fined or go to jail for not paying your taxes. And then you say to the IRS, okay, how much do I owe? And the IRS says, we know, but we're not going to tell you. And if you guess wrong, yeah. we're going to come after you and criminally charge you for that. That that feels a little bit like this, right? It feels a little bit like, what were these entries for? And there's little give things that I see giving uh, given away in the indictment that lead to that. For example, they focus in the indictment in the statement of fact that there was no retainer agreement with this attorney. Well, technically speaking, you do not have to have a written retainer agreement with an attorney. You can have a verbal agreement with an attorney. So it doesn't really matter if there's a written retainer or not. That's a distraction from what was happening. And huh. Cohen was Trump's attorney. He was Trump's attorney. And it's not illegal for an attorney, it might be immoral, might be unethical, but it's not illegal for an attorney to make a hush money payment. That happens all the time. It happens with non-disclosure agreements. It happens to make cases go away. It happens to make pending litigation go away. Mm. So that that those are some of the things that jump out to me. So it's, are we really saying we're going to indict and prosecute a former president of the United States because general business ledger entries are wrong? Is that really what this is about or is something else at play? So – for for those of us who I've not kept up with, I, I don't you know all the there's been stuff swirling around. I, I know you, you sort of you just got to it, but I wanted to just ask you like just plain and simple, what is the fraudulent charge? You you said there's something about the entries a, a in the books ledger. and and then yeah. you know maybe using some money for hush money or something like that. But like, can you just explain it really plainly for you know uh, simple pastors for like me? me? <laughs> <laughs> so the allegation is that Trump directed Michael Cohen to pay Stormy Daniels $130,000 and make a hush money payment to a tabloid magazine. So that's the allegation. The allegation is Trump organization, Trump himself directed that to be done, that it was done, that Michael Cohen did do that. And that later, the next year after the election was over, the Trump organization reimbursed Cohen for those fees and essentially doubled what he paid as part of a retainer agreement as part of attorney fees. So got that's it, got it. the allegation. And you're that's, saying that's the underlying facts. And you're saying though that that's Sorry. that's not you're saying that's not illegal. That that's something that's that's done commonly. It may it may or may not be moral, but you're saying it's not illegal. Right. It is it is very, very common for individuals. I mean, half of Congress, I think, has paid settlements Ooh. for EO complaints, sexual harassment complaints. It is very, very common. You know, President Clinton did this right. Paying off people, um, paying off people to drop litigation, paying off people to to abide by a nondisclosure agreement, settling cases out of court, settling things that could go to court later. Um, and resolving them outside of court. So none of that, making a hush money payment isn't illegal. Is it the Nothing fact that, about that itself is illegal. Aren't they trying to uh, connect it like to using campaign funds to the process? 
That's the speculation. The problem is, even though there's been an indictment and Trump has been arraigned, we don't know because the DA isn't saying what the underlying offense is, right? So that's like the the, the legal goofiness of all of this is the, the crime is a misdemeanor offense of making inaccurate or fraudulent entries in a business ledger saying that this was really for hush money payments, but it was entered in as attorney fees. Again, even factually, I'm struggling with that because I think there's a built-in defense to attorneys get paid to do those kinds of things. Doesn't necessarily make those entries false. But Bragg has not told us, this DA has not told us what is the underlying crime that was being done that makes these offenses a felony. Normally they're misdemeanors. They're only a felony if you're making fraudulent entries in this business ledger in order to conceal another crime or to commit another crime. He's not telling us what that other crime is. He's hiding that from us. And there's a whole lot of reasons why that interferes with due process when we talk about, but we don't know. We're assuming it's election law related or maybe tax law related. So here's the thing. If it's Go Go ahead. Go. No, no. Here's the thing. I was just going to say, he talks about New York state election law, right? So in that press conference, he said, well, there's a lot of things, you know, look at New York state election law. I've looked, I'm not licensed in New York, but I looked at New York state election law. All of that indicates that that has to do with running for office in New York. Trump was running for for federal office, running for the presidency, not an office in New York. So I don't think those provisions of election law that would make this a felony apply. The other piece is if we're really talking about election law, why wouldn't the U.S. attorneys be prosecuting this, right? Why wouldn't this be a federal offense yeah. if we're talking about federal election law? <laughs> right. And it would be novel, very, very unique to try to use that as the underlying felony to create felonies out of these misdemeanor offenses. Now, now, two things here. Did did Trump really pay Stormy Daniels? And related to that, um, I heard that Stormy Daniels lost some cases to him and owes him money. Right. So, so, you know, in the backdrop, people who don't who don't know yesterday at the same time, I mean, within hours of Trump being arraigned, right, officially charged and arraigned, um, Stormy Daniels legal team lost an appeal in federal court and the federal court upheld an order for her to pay almost one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in legal fees to Trump uh-huh. because of for, uh, because of frivolous litigation that she bought, brought against Trump. Uh-huh. So there's, you know, there's all this drama. There's like this soap opera drama behind this whole situation. Trump, to my understanding, has always denied having an affair with Stormy Daniels. Trump has always taken the position this never happened and it's extortion. But I, but I don't believe Trump. If we believe. <laughs> Well, right, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, I don't, I don't know that he's necessarily credible on that. Right. The evidence that we have that one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in hush money was paid at the direction of Trump is Michael Cohen, his former attorney, has been indicted, convicted, pled guilty in federal court himself, but has also right. admitted to lying under oath to Congress about other things. So that's their witness. That's their key witness Ugh. to come in and testify and say all of this was done at the direction of Trump. And this $130,000 that I paid to Stormy Daniels was at the request at the direction of Trump. It seems really uh, <laughs> it's crazy. suspicious, though, to have a federal court ordering about the same amount to be paid back in for, for frivolous. Leg- <laughs> is, that, is that just a coincidence or is that? Actually, it, su- I, it, suggesting. it's purely coincidence. Okay. It's purely coincidence, but That's it is. Funny. Yeah, it's purely coincidence, but it was funny. I mean, it was ironic, if nothing else. God tells that the best stories. The so, so I think right. you know, there's a, there's a. I think this is my quick take on the politics of the situation. Um, is that uh, they had to figure out how to make this a felony, and you could probably Davis could probably address how they got to the how from, they from how the, misdemeanor to felony to felony. Yeah, what's the math that they did there? Um, but they obviously, if they throw the book at Trump and they get a felony and he gets convicted of the felony, then he can't run for president. Right. Right. That, felon- and that, and that's what you're saying. You're saying that's why they want it to be a felony because somebody that's been convicted of a felony is not um, eligible to run. Right. That, that's exactly right. But I think the other part of the players, I think they know that they aren't going to get a felony conviction out of Trump. I think it's um, they know themselves. And so the, what they're going to try to do is like January 6th, this thing. Let's try to stretch this out as long as possible. Right. And I was I was texting with with Davis before the show, and he told me uh, via text. He said um, the judge said, "Hey, we need to expedite expedite this case. case as fast as possible." And then so he booked the next hearing to be in December. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> he booked the next hearing to be in December. Like what? When you mean when you hear when you go before expedited. a judge? Yeah. When you go before is that expedited? Yeah. Exactly. What does the judge do when you say, "Hey, judge, we need to expedite this," and he says, "Okay, we're going to expedite it." Is that what that means? Six months? Seven months? Eight I, months? I've never, I've never seen that. Huh. I, I've never seen that. I mean, outside of COVID, right? Everything yeah. was delayed. In-person legal proceedings were delayed during COVID. Outside yeah. of COVID, I've never seen that many months be considered expedited or even reasonable. I mean, normally after arraignment in in Pennsylvania courts, after arraignment, the, there you got 30 days to get discovery. You're usually filing motions after 30 days. You expect to appear in court within 60 days after wow. arraignment as a normal course, not even expedited. But <laughs> but the other thing that I think, you know, so so the judge says, let's expedite this until December. That's That doesn't make any sense at all. But the other thing that's just bizarre about this that lends me to believe they are trying to drag this out is this. You have a DA that is using legal technicalities to to not disclose things to the defense that would be necessary for the defense to file motions to kill this case, right? And that's where we start talking about due process. And again, coming from someone who's spent most of the last 16 years as a defense attorney rather than as a prosecutor, you know, people say, oh, this defense attorney is using some kind of a technicality. Well, in reality, he's using a technicality saying, I don't have to disclose in the indictment what the underlying offense is that makes this a felony or gets us around the statute of limitations. But by not disclosing it, he's dragging this all out. Right. right. So if he wow. disclosed it, let's just say, for example, it was federal yeah. election law. He's saying, hey, they did this to get around campaign contribution yeah. limits and to interfere with an election. So it's a violation of federal law. If yeah. that's why he's if that's what they're doing, if that's what makes this a felony, then immediately, immediately, if I'm the defense team, I'm going to be filing. Hey, I'm going to say that doesn't get you around the statute of limitations. I'm going to say you don't have jurisdiction. Those are federal offenses. What legal theory do you have to have jurisdiction over those offenses? Right. What case law do you have to support the idea that you can mash federal and state law in this way to get here? And I'm going to be filing those things immediately. I'm going to be filing motions to dismiss the indictment for failure to state an offense. But again, if the DA is going to drag out discovery and is going to use every legal technicality to delay this, <laughs> that only drags the process out. And, and that's troubling to me. That's not what a good DA does. That's what a reasonable prosecutor does. A reasonable prosecutor wears the right hat and says, look, I'm all about the facts. I'm all about the truth. I'm all about presenting everything we have. And I'm going to disclose that early. When I was a prosecutor, if I had the goods on someone, I'd hand it to the defense attorney with the charges and say, your guy needs to plead guilty. We got him. Here's the goods. Yeah. Here's everything we need to prove this case. Start negotiating right now because otherwise we're just wasting time. That's what a good prosecutor does. That's not what we see. I think one of the things just to just to underline here, the, the due process you're talking about is um, is all based on. I mean, um, American uh, the, the, these these principles of justice is based on biblical principles of justice. Um, you know, um, the the requirement in 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 biblical law was that every you know every you couldn't bring a charge against someone without two or three witnesses. Those two or three witnesses um, have to be cross examined, yeah. um, and um, and and you and that that means you can't have an anonymous witness because an anonymous witness can't usually be cross examined. Yeah. Um, and and because there was penalties in biblical law, if if you were a false witness, you claimed things against someone, right. and and if if and if you're found to be false, what your false testimony would have done to the one you were accusing yeah. um, th um, that penalty you're liable for, which is again, right. why you need to be able to cross examine and be held um, responsible for your testimony. But, but again, you're talking about a, a, a sort of technicality where someone's saying we have a charge. We're not going to tell you what it is yet. Um, and yeah, yeah, we have witnesses, but you know, but, but we're not going to tell you, you know, who the witnesses are yeah. or, what, or whatever. And withholding all that while dragging out this sort of, cloud of suspicion um it it rather than protecting um the innocence That's of someone right. until they're proven guilty right. it actually inverts that and, and flips right. it and says it makes them look as guilty as possible yeah, there's this yeah, yeah. cloud of suspicion yeah. for months and months and months right. without you being forced to actually bring anything out right. um and you know proverbs 18 17 should be you know um everybody's life verse life yeah, verse uh -huh. but the first one to state his case sounds right 
until you come and examine uh, the other side, until right. you examine his brother, um, there's almost always two sides to every case. And even in a situation like this where you arguably, you know, there's been some sketchy stuff in Trump's life and mm-hmm. and um, and maybe he's even um, guilty of this, though he's claimed otherwise. All 34 counts. Um, and uh, yeah, but <laughs> but I think but even there, part of the glory of biblical justice is that Lady Justice is blind and because the point is that the scales of justice, these standards of due process apply to everyone the same. Yeah. And even if you have two corrupt people going at it in court, you still want justice yeah, that's right. um, for that because one because ultimately it comes back to the law of love. Do unto others as you have them do to you. Yeah. You you don't want this done to you. You right. don't want someone to have the right to um, trump up a bunch of charges, That's no, right. no pun intended, right. um, and um, and and put a black cloud over your reputation, and there, and then you say, "What are you charging me with?" And was it? Well, we'll, we'll tell you later. But yeah. you know what you did. Yeah. You know, and that, like, that's, you know you were bad. And yeah. you're like, no, but what, what's the charge? Well, we'll find out in court in six months. But yeah. until then, you think about it. You sit there in the corner. Yeah. I mean, th- there's it's just it's wicked and evil that um, that you can have a, a, a situation like this. Yeah. Davis, I don't know. You have any thoughts on that? I mean, is that what you're thinking? Well, no, I, I would agree with that. I think that's that's not a biblical approach. And, and that's what I mean. I think prosecutors have a, such an obligation to to do things the right way, to do things well. And I get very, very <laughs> fired up about that because I see it. And so you have this whole political aspect of prosecution these days, right? So this is a DA that ran on a platform of, I'm going to prosecute Trump. I mean, that's how he got elected. He said, elect me DA. I'm going to prosecute wow. Trump. I'm yeah. going to charge he Trump. He said that. That's and, right. Wow. You know, that's that's not what justice looks like. But take it even further by delaying this, by not revealing this information right away. If you have a case, let's put it on the table. Don't hide behind legal technicalities. Let's put it on the table. Right. Let's go for truth. But even more, he's further tainting a jury pool by allowing this <sighs> uncontested narrative to just sit out there that's for right. months and months and months. Wow. And it's going to be difficult enough to get a fair trial in Manhattan right. for any Republican, let alone someone as, you know, a lightning rod like Trump. But you're you're allowing the jury pool to be tainted because you can't even counter the the false narrative that's out there because there is no narrative other than he's guilty and and we need to go after him. Let me uh, can I ask one more yeah, question? Yeah, yeah, we, we need I know we need to finish yep. it. Davis, um so if if they successfully drag this out and there are charges pending in 2024, um and so if, if Gabe's right and that seems that the play is um, get him convicted of a felony or at least get felony charges somehow to stick to him or something at like that. At least drag this out as long which, as possible. Which minimum. Him, yeah. it, it is, it is, is that right? It makes him ineligible to run. Um, and, and is it a conviction of felony charge um, or what if he's if it's still pending? I mean, is that still enough to um, get him eliminated from the presidential race? No, it would have to be an actual conviction. And then you'd have all kinds of fun legal issues with a potential appeal. So let's say he was convicted of a felony deemed ineligible, then you're going to have, and then he's going to appeal it. Right. So potentially you have a scenario where someone who's running in a general election has a felony conviction that would make them ineligible for office that's under appeal at the time of the election. That, that would be part of this play that I think would just send everything <laughs> into a very unique, interesting yeah. firestorm this to, is, say the least. This, the cir- to say the least. The circus that then Man. became the super circus yeah. that became the super uber circus. It is nuts. It's da- nuts. Davis, thank you so much. Where can people follow you? Where's the best place to find out more about you and connect with you? Um, at Davis Yants on Twitter. So at D-A-V-I-S Yance on Twitter. Also, our website for the law firm is yancelaw.com. Those are both uh, places to check us out. And um, hopefully... We, uh, you know, we'll continue to see some some quick movement on this. Hopefully, things will get revealed so that we can pursue justice in this. Um, well, and that's what I'm praying for. We'll, we'll be in touch with you, man. Yeah, really, Thank you. really appreciate you coming on, Davis. God bless. All right, take care, brothers. See you. All right, it's that time. It's not. It's not running through the. Oh no! The, thing. the Bluetooth. Yeah. Unbelievable. Right. Right. I gotta you, read you, you keep going. I'm gonna read okay, an ad. Yeah, you read an ad. I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna, I'll, 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 get, I'll take care. I'm gonna tell everybody about yep. New St. Andrews first. Okay, okay? New right. St. Andrews. Um, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make something up right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I just want to talk about New St. Andrews. Um, maybe killing it. I, I mean, first of all, did you see that last ad? Yeah. Did you see that laughing at lies ad? Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen that yet, you need to go find it. Um, hold on, hold on. Hold I know. On, I'm, hold on, hold on, I'm up. I'm I'm doing it. I got um, it to work. Yeah. All right. Good. 
Um, I, I went to New St. Andrews College. I graduated uh, mm-hmm. from there in 2002. My brother went there and graduated. Yeah. I uh, worked for Ben, Dr. Ben Merkel. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Um, my son's going there now. He's a freshman. Yeah. Um, he started in 2022, which really kind of makes you feel old. Wow. Yeah. He, that was 20 years yeah. since I graduated. <laughs> Feels like it was about like six months ago. Yeah. But it was actually 20 years yeah. ago. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, um, they're doing amazing work. Dr. Mm-hmm. Ben Merkel, president of New St. Andrews, is, is leading the charge. Um, and, and, and the thing that you need to know is that um, New St. Andrews is focused primarily on, on forming men and women yeah. to be cultural leaders, yep, that's right. um, which is, which is, this is like officer school. Yeah. Um, th- this is, this is, this is not like, they're not going to teach you how to computer program, right. how to do engineering or nursing as God glorifying uh, uh, vocations as those are. Yeah. Uh-huh. But what, but this is prior to that. Right. Um, prior to whatever you end up doing, whatever God's called you to do, New St. Andrews is it's a liberal arts education, which is the old classical program that right. said, these are the key things you need to be a leader in the world, to be a free man, a free woman, um, and then do whatever God calls you to do in, in your vocation yeah. as, as, as a man or woman uh, made in God's image. So and, check and out funny, NSA. You, you do a, I, I did an exercise of looking at, when I was working at NSA, kind of looking at who currently, all our leaders. Yeah. That are you know presidents, whatever business leaders, whatever working in our society, who's got a liberal arts degree, yeah. and it was significant. Yeah, I mean it was like the Yahoo CEO, the Google CEO, yeah. the um, Yahoo? you know president. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think it's uh, President Obama. I think is yeah. one of his degrees that was connected to liberal arts, but like. Half the presidents yeah. in our country yeah. had some sort of degree connected yeah. to liberal arts. I mean, yeah. it really is a candidate. And, and, and I, mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, some of these tools yeah. can be used for evil. So some of the yeah. bad guys yeah. Got, yeah. These, got this degree too, and they're using, they've twisted yeah. it, and they're using yeah. it for evil. Um, but yeah. man, uh, can't recommend it uh, more highly. So visit um, nsa.edu today. Find out more. Uh, schedule a visit. Okay, Psalm of the day. You got your psalm? You got yeah, it going? Yeah, yeah, it's coming. It's going. Something's happening. Mm-mm. It's. It, uh, maybe no, maybe no, it disconnected again. No, nothing's happening. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah interesting. No, no, nothing's happening. It was something was playing a minute ago. It was. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna get out my Bible. And I'm gonna I'm gonna get ready to read the Psalm, and you can oh. just, you work on that. You know what happened? What happened? It froze. Oh no. Yeah. Neil can put it in afterwards. <laughs> post. <laughs> <laughs> Fix that in post. I don't think I'm gonna have music going out either. <laughs> All right. Well, there they we can go. put that up there. So the Psalm of the day is Psalm uh, 144, and what you're hearing right now. What you're hearing right now, right? Right now? Okay, I can say that. Okay. Is uh, Brian Sauvé's new version. If you guys don't know Brian Sauvé, you need to check it out on Spotify, iTunes, all the places where you buy your music. I don't know. He's probably got his own website. But um, this is his uh, new version just out. Um, Psalm 144. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My goodness, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust, who subdues people under me. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him, or the son of man that thou makest account of him? Man's like vanity, his days are as a shadow that passeth away. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. Send thine hand from above. Rid me and deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children. Whose mouth speaks vanity, the right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. I will sing praises unto thee. It's he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David, his servant, from the hurtful sword. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. That our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. That our garners may be full, affording all manner of store. That our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets. Mm. That our oxen may be strong to labor. That there be no breaking in nor going out. There be no complaining or crying out in our streets. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. That's right. So uh, this is a, a psalm that's just, I mean, it's really um, glorious. It, it um, opens uh, blessing God for being our rock, yeah. our fortress, our shield who trains our hands for war, our fingers for battle. Um, he's a fortress, a stronghold, a shield, subdues nations under us. And all of this is pure grace. He knows right away this is a gift, and he asks God why he does this, why God is mindful of him. Um, it's sort of a Psalm 8 uh, kind of question. Um, mm-hmm. Even though man is like a breath, like we're here and we're gone. We're like a shadow and we, we pass away 
uh, so quickly. But he immediately calls upon God to continue fighting for us and rescue us from pagans and their lies. And he says, we will sing and worship God because he is the God who gives us victories, just as he delivered us from, uh, delivered David from his enemies. And then the psalm closes with this great blessing, asking God to make our sons like full grown plants in their youth and our daughters like polished cornerstones in a palace, full granaries, fruitful sheep in the fields, with no suffering or cries of distress in our streets, and a blessing on all the people, all the people whose God is the Lord. And, and the psalm actually brings together two things I think many Christians have a hard time with, things that we have a hard time um, holding together. The first thing is the blessing of God's saving grace, and the second is the blessing or the grace of God's what we might call Deuteronomic blessings. It, it's absolutely true that in Christ, salvation is the central irrevocable blessing and nothing in this world can touch it. And, and Christians generally are good about that part. So think Romans 8, persecution, famine, sword, nakedness. What can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Nothing, right? No, no matter how this world goes, no matter how this life goes, if you have Christ, you have God's irrevocable blessing, saving blessing that nothing can touch. But Jesus and this psalm actually promises that there are other blessings that God is free to dump on top of that blessing, and we should want them. They're real blessings. Jesus, for example, says that those who give up houses and families and fields for his sake will receive back 30, 60, 100 fold. But notice what he says. Jesus doesn't say in heaven. No. He says 30, 60, 100 fold in this life. That's right. With persecutions. Not, not all easy, and in the life to come, eternal life. You see what Jesus says. When you follow him, he says, um, I, I'm inclined to bless. And as you bless and you give up things for the sake of the gospel, he's inclined to give them back to you in this life with hardships and more in the life to come. So the Bible teaches us to believe God both for the grace of salvation, which can never be taken away from us, and the Bible also teaches us to believe God for his blessings here in this world and in history. Blessings like believing thriving children, fruitful fields and businesses, and nations that confess that Jesus is their king. These blessings on our families and lands and nations are Deuteronomic blessings. They're not automatic and they're not guaranteed. God's free to give them and he's free to take them away again. But they are blessings. They're blessings on top of blessings. If all we get is what the thief on the cross got, then praise the Lord. Right. Amen. <laughs> if, we get, if that's all we get, praise the Lord. Uh, we've not lost anything, and he's not ripped us off. He gave us eternal life in his son. Christ is more than enough. But God is also pleased to often give us even more than that. And that, too, is his blessing. We should work for that. We should look for it, we should love it, and we should bless him and praise him for it as we trust in him. That's good, Toby. There you Thank go. Thank you. Psalm 144. Psalm 144. Really and check good. out Brian Sauvage's new. Yep. It's like something about dragons praising him, which is from Psalm 148. Well, uh, until tomorrow. Tomorrow we got a good show coming well, up. Maybe we'll have uh, our music. We'll have back. our music all back. Yeah. And actually, no, it's going to put in in, past, in in post production. So we're going to be talking about it, but it's going to be really weird because the music's actually going to be playing, yeah, even right. though it's not playing for us right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, if, if you're single, yeah, if you're single, get married. But hang on, before t else? tomorrow, I just wanted to say real quick, tomorrow's show. Um, kind of leave you guys here. With this I should have been a little more prepared here. You have something um, going on tomorrow. Show. Uh, yeah, tomorrow we got a. Um, uh, um, oh yeah, Siaka Masakoi. Okay. Coming on the show tomorrow, um, he's a actor down in Hollywood, oh, yeah. um, uh, re doing a lot in Republican Party politics down there. Really interesting cat, and I'm yeah. excited to have him on. So uh, until next time, until tomorrow, go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politic. Also, get married and have babies and baptized. All that good stuff. As a publisher of Classical Curriculum, I would like to apologize for the great books. For the many authors among the Greeks, the Romans, and Christendom, they are an incredible heritage worth preserving, and here is my apology. What? Perhaps I should define my terms. Apology, something said or written in defense or justification of what appears to others to be wrong, such as Tertullian's Apology for Christianity. Perhaps now more than ever, 
The great books and our cultural inheritance of Western civilization is in need of this kind of apology. We want to make the case that an essential part of a robust Christian education is being equipped to make an apology or a defense, not only of your faith, but also of the cultural soil in which Christianity grew, the authors, books, works, and history found in the great books, a defense of a Christian inheritance of the great books. And we'll do that by introducing you to some of these authors through our emails, where you will be able to receive a small taste of such an education. Old Western culture isn't the only curriculum to study the great books. There are many good ways to do it. But it is very unique in its narrative, story-like approach that is accessible and loved by teens, usable alone or in groups or family settings, yet engages with the ideas and texts to a degree that educators have told us it is their favorite tool for conveying a love of learning and the great books to students of any age. I want to share a short letter with you from one of the American founding fathers, John Adams, to his then 17-year-old son, John Quincy, who would later become the sixth president of the United States. My dear son, as the war in which your country is engaged will probably hereafter attract your attention more than it does at this time, and as the future circumstances of your country may require other wars, as well as councils and negotiations similar to those which are now in agitation, I wish to turn your thoughts early to such studies as will afford you the most solid instruction and improvement for the part which may be allotted you to act on the stage of life. There is no history perhaps better adapted to this useful purpose than that of Thucydides, an author of whom I hope you will make yourself perfect master in original language, which is Greek, the most perfect of all human languages. You may be relieved to know that students are not required to read Thucydides in the original Greek in Old Western culture. They can read it in English. But it is one of the many works they will read and understand, joining generations of men and women prepared for the stage of life through these works. The classical education of the American Founding Fathers and of the Reformers and Medievals before them, as well as the early Church Fathers, was not a coincidence. It was a tool they used to prepare themselves and their children for effective lives well lived. At Roman Roads Press, we are not canceling the classics. On the contrary, our mission and our motto is to equip families to inherit the humanities.